Hey guys, so today we are taking a look at Cat Lady, a game published by AEG and designed by Josh Wood, and it plays two to four players. So in this game, you are taking on the role of cat ladies, where you're collecting food, toys, catnip, and of course, lovable cats. So, Josie thinks that you should check out this game, so let's see how it plays. Alright, so let's go over setup of the game. So first you're going to shuffle the stray cat cards and form a deck to the side here and deal out three cards here in the play area. And then we're going to have the main deck off to the side here and then we're going to have a 3x3 three three grid of these cards. Now in a two player game you're going to remove all cards with a number that says 3 plus and 4 in the top right corner and return them to the box. Then you're going to remove two cards at random and return them to the box as well. In a three-player game, you'll remove all cards with a number four in the top right corner and return them to the box. Then you're going to remove two cards at random and return those also to the box without looking at them. In a four-player game, no cards are removed and that is what we have set up here. Then you're going to place this cat token off to the side as well as these two victory point tokens and the stash of food over here. So in this game, players are just going to continue taking turns back and forth until the end of the game. On your turn, you must take an entire row or column of three cards. So you could take this way or this way. But you will not be able to take the row or column that the cat is next to. So for instance, if the cat was here, I could not be able to take this row. But I could still take this column. Now if the cat was here, I could not take this column, but I could still take these rows. So let's say on my turn, I'm going to take these, this row here of these top three cards, and then I'm going to, the, uh, the cat moves to whatever location you just took from. So I just took that row, so that cat goes there, and then you're going to deal out three new cards to fill up what you just took. So the game will end whenever a row or column cannot be refilled because there are no more cards in this main deck. All right, so let's go over the different card types, starting with the cat card. So if you get a cat card, you're going to place it face up in front of you. So on the cat card, you'll, there will be different colored cats, and these are victory points that you can get at the end of the game. And this is what food the cat needs to be fed in order to get those points by the end of the game. So for instance, if this cat was fed and had three chicken um, at the end of the game, then that, that cat card will be worth six points. If the cat is not fed by the end of the game, then you will lose two victory points for not feeding this cat, and you ignore this. Now cats also have different colors like I mentioned. They will be either black, orange, or white. And then some cat cards, for instance this one, will award different victory points depending on certain colors of cats. So for instance, Alvin is worth one point for each orange cat you feed. Now how you feed your cat cards is by collecting food cards here and there are three different types of food in this game. You have milk, chicken, and tuna and they correspond with these cubes. So whenever you collect a food card you are going to immediately discard this card and then grab the food from the supply and add it to your play area. If you take a wild food card then you will grab a purple cube and add it to your supply. And it's also important to note that the player with the most leftover food after feeding their cats at the end of the game must lose two victory points. So now let's go over the costume cards. So if you were to pick one of these up, um, then you will add it to your hand and you'll keep it till the end of the game. And then at the end of the game, whoever has the most costume cards will get six victory points. But if you don't have any costume cards, you will lose two victory points. Now if you take a catnip card, you will also keep this in your hand till the end of the game. And there'll be different ways you can score points through this. So for instance, if you only have one of these catnip cards in your hand at the end of the game, it's actually going to be minus two victory points. If you have two or three of these catnip cards in your hand at the end of the game, then you'll get one victory point per fully fed cat at the end of the game. And then lastly, if you have four or more, you'll get two victory points per fully fed cat. So if you were to collect a toy card, you will also keep this in your hand for the end of the game and you will get points depending on how many different toys you have. So there are multiple different kinds of toys. So for instance, this is a mouse toy, we got a cat tower, and a feather wand. That's just a few examples. And so 
uh, at the end of the game, if you have, let's say, uh, three different types of toys, like this example here, then you will get five victory points for the end of the game. Four different toys, you get eight. And five different toys, you get 12. Now, if you collect lost cat cards, you will keep them in your hand until you choose to use them on your turn. So the first thing you can do with this lost cat card is discard two of them to gain a token for two victory points at the end of the game. So you would just discard two of those and get that token. And you can also discard two lost cat cards to get one stray cat. So I would discard these and then I could pick one of these three stray cats. Um, let's just pick, uh, let's pick Sweetheart. So you'll grab the cat and add him to your cat collection and your personal play area. Now the last card to go over are these spray bottle cards. So whenever you collect this card, you will add it to your hand and it will remain in your hand until you use it on one of your turns. Now this card has no value at the end of the game, but this simply is used to move the cat token. So you would discard this card and move the cat token to another row or column. So that might open up a row or column for you to choose new cards from. So once again, you're going to just go back and forth taking turns until you have a row or a column that you can no longer refill cards because the main deck has been depleted. So let's go over again how to score each item that we have in our play area. So first, you'll add up the values of all your fed cats. So for instance, uh, this cat has three chickens, so that was fed. And this one was fed as well, and same with Sparkle. So we're gonna add up all those points. So that's three, six, five, so that's 14 points. And then you'll subtract two points per cat that was not fully fed at the end of the game. So for this example, we have one cat that was not fully fed, so that is minus two points. And then you're gonna score your costume cards. So this player has two cards, which happens to be the most among the other players. So they would score six victory points for those. So we have two catnip cards that will give us one victory point per every fully fed cat we have. So we have three fully fed cats. So these catnip cards will give us three points. And then you'll score the toy cards. So we only have one toy card here. So that will only give us one victory point. And then lastly, you'll add up any uh, victory point tokens that a player might have. However, this player does not have one, so they don't get those points. So then each player will tally up all their points and whoever has the most points is the winner. So Josie, what did you think of Cat Lady? Really? Well, Josie approves of this game, so she wants to know what you think about this game by leaving comments in the description below. And she also said that if you're interested in getting it, we'll put a link in the description below. And of course, she wants you to tell the world about us because she, she thinks mom and dad are awesome. So go ahead and subscribe and we'll see you guys later.